Alex. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's good to be back with you all tonight. I spent the week in Honduras and Guatemala. Uh, Maria Angelica, my beautiful niece, got married to Christian. They had a wonderful wedding, and I'm exhausted. So it's good to be back with you. Uh, tonight, we are going to hear from one of our workshop projects. Our workshop projects is where we give you some data and you go ahead and work on it and submit it to us. Rory's in charge and he's put together a real good program uh, to show off a lot of the things that some of our contributors have been giving to us. So um, I'm gonna share my screen and um, go into the calendar because I wanna tell you that uh, Sid's gonna be here next week. Sid's gonna be telling us about some of the things he's done in astrophotography. It's a journey not just a sprint. He's, he's going to tell you about some mistakes he's made, what he's learned from them, how he's grown in it, and all that other stuff. And then we've got other shows coming up uh, over the next little while here. Um, we're actually, we've, we've done a good job of filling the calendar with a lot of stuff. We're all doing up until May. But as always, we need you to uh, fill in the rest of the time. I remind you that NEEF is coming up on April 15th, 16th. The 16th would be the day that we are going to miss the show because we're going to be involved with going to NEEF. And, um, but if you at all have the opportunity to go, uh, and I think there's even a, um, an online version of it too. But anyway, get in touch with NEEF, go to it. It was, it, it was hit by COVID. But they're back, and we're really glad about that. Uh, if you can give a presentation, if there's something you'd like to share, something you've done, share your experience. Please hit this contact button right here. Tell us what your first name is, your last name. Give us your email, and tell us what you'd like to talk about. Remember, this is your station. It's not something where um, other people are uh, just putting on a show for you you can go ahead and help put on the shows. We know that an awful lot of you have an awful lot of knowledge and we'd like to hear from you. So um, this is our uh, program and I am going to introduce to you, uh, Mr. Rory, Rory Clark. Can you tell us about what the show is gonna be about tonight? I'm gonna stop my sharing and uh, take over Rory. All right, thanks Alex. Let me uh, share my screen here. All right. Uh, can you guys see that okay? Uh, yeah. All right, perfect. So I'm at the astroimagingchannel.org. And if you guys are interested in submitting next time to the TAC workshops, um, every three to six months or so, we put uh, one of our, uh, either our, our uh, team members' data on here or data from the community. And we have uh um people that are viewers of the astro imaging channels um download the data and you could download that here where it says get get zip file they process it and then you could submit the finished images um on the same page as well we had five uh presenters um uh willing we had five uh, uh community members that uh, process the image and decided, and, and we're willing to present tonight. So very grateful for you guys to present that data. It's Terry's, Terry's data of NGC55. And I'm gonna let Terry say a little something about this about data, data, where it came from, and uh, how, is it, how it was acquired. Thanks, Rory. Uh, this is uh, NGC 55. This is a Southern Hemisphere galaxy. It's a member of the nearby sculpture group of galaxies, and it's, which is a group of approximately 30 galaxies. Uh, this is a fairly short exposure. Normally, what I do normally, this is 16 hours of data, but it's very close and very bright, so that's why it's quite short. Uh, it's from, uh, just to give you an idea what the instrument looks like, I'll show you what it looks like. I've got a uh, robotic observatory uh, a couple hundred kilometers from here. I'm in in, uh, in Melbourne in Australia. Uh, this is uh, the instrument that's used. It's a 10-inch ARCOS with a uh, CCD camera on the back, which is a STL 11000 off-axis guider, rotator, 
uh, it's, it's in a dome. It's in it's completely unmanned and fully autonomous. It sits out there. It's uh, powered powered by uh, solar, and uh, I run this all to to a to a large battery bank. So it gives you an idea what the instruments look like. Uh, this this image was uh, uh, I think I started on this in 2016 to 2017, so it's quite old. Um, what I wanted to achieve with this was uh, something that looked a little bit 3D. I, uh, I threw in a bunch of uh, HA. I wanted to have that pop, and I wanted all the little clusters to come up in the in the final final data set. And um, this is this predates me using uh, PixInsight, so it's CCD stack and Photoshop. Over to you, Rory. Okay, thanks for that, Terry. Uh, really, really good data. And um, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, the first to present for tonight is going to be Mike Cranefield. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Mike. Great. Th thanks very much. Um, let me just see if I can figure out the sharing of the screen. Um, Can I just check? Can you see my screen there? I don't think you've hit the share button yet, quite yet. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. I can't see the share button. Um, you might uh, need, to, you need to select the um, like which screen you want to display before the share button will light up. And I've hit the select screen. Yeah, so then then you hit like screen one and then hit and then hit share. It's not giving me anything. Sorry. Um uh, press it, was, press escape this, to clear out of where you are. Right. Now, what are you looking at on your screen? So I've I've just got everybody in front of me and the okay. button it, the button to share screen is grayed out. Uh it worked perfectly beforehand. Yeah, we just tested this. I don't know. Gosh. Uh, you're, you're talking about the square button with the up arrow, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. It's just gray. Well, how about how about um, Mike? It, we can we can have the next person talk. Mike, you yeah. can come back, and then we when we just swap you places. Yeah, just like, go yeah, for that. Leave, leave the call and come back. Sure. Okay. And Rory, you're going to go on to the next presenter. Yeah. Then we'll have a uh, Conwar um present hopefully your button's not great out um it looks good sorry let me share my screen sounds good thank you let me know when you can see my screen looks good okay. give me a second now Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Ken Rebra, and I will be presenting how I process Terry's awesome data set on NDC 55. Thank you, Terry, for the data set. Just with the introduction, I am based just outside of Memphis, Tennessee, and a member of Memphis Astronomical Society. And we have our own astrophotography um, uh, focus subgroup called as MathFit, uh, as we like to call it. We have our monthly meetings where we discuss our work and challenges faced by each member. It's a new group, so we we uh, regularly have this meeting, sometimes more more than a month. Uh, we got scopes ranging from CDK 14 inch to RedCat uh, RedCat 51, so we got everything. Um, we are a small group, but we like to complete with the big ones. As for me, I started this hobby uh, in June 2020, and, and I almost imaged from my backyard. Because of that, I have a lot of light pollution. I use all the narrowband filters. And so for me, getting the broadband data and that too from the Southern Hemisphere is a welcome change. Thanks to ASC and Terry for that. And my overview, but the processing overview of this one, I have stated my processing in the following steps. 
and I'll be explaining each of them further down the line. My goal here is to do a quick walkthrough of how I process the data and later show you in the pixel site of all the images. The first thing that I did is to process the HA data. The premise of this is to subtract any red channel that is present in the um, hydrogen alpha data. I follow the steps shown by a uh, YouTube uh, user called as James Lamb. The link will be shared here. Uh, what the overall feel of this is basically is a step, it, has, it contains two steps. Step one is extract the good part of HS um, hydrogen alpha signal by subtracting the portion of the red signal in the hydrogen alpha band. Here, and we, multi and we um, multiply with the constant to compensate what the signal we're taking it out. And the step two will be add a good hydrogen alpha signal to the red channel back. And then we multiply with the scale factor that how much data we need to enter. So for that one, we follow the basic the steps. We want to, uh, to remove the first, I ran the Blurex to um, um, bring out the details, uh, ran the noise X to remove any noise, then did the pixel mat, where I subtracted the hydrogen alpha minus the red channel into some constant. For me, the constant came out to be 0 0.12, which gave me the red channel. Uh, you can see this image of red channel. This is a, a hydrogen channel that I got out of that original hydrogen alpha um, 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 image. After that, once I extracted this data out, I had to add this um, hydrogen alpha back to the red channel. That was done using a pixel mat also, which was basically adding the red channel to the new um, hydrogen alpha minus the median of new hydrogen alpha. The premise here is the median of hydrogen alpha is the noise. So basically, we have a hydrogen alpha minus noise multiplied by some constant factor. For me, that factor is two, how much we want to add it. So this step gave me a new hydrogen alpha that I can embed into the red channel. Uh, for the RGB combination, I use the updated red channel and I got I generated from the previous step and combined with my blue and green channels to get my RGB image. Um, to clear out some of the gradients, I ran um, uh, DBE with a fault tolerance of a high fault tolerance of five. Um, I did some background neutralization um, and to run um, uh, spectral photometric, uh, photometric color calibration, I had to do the image solver. And then after that, I did the, um, remove some noise. Uh, I could see some noise when I zoomed it up. Um, after doing all these steps, I saw a little bit of green tint on the image. So I ran the SCNR with the 0.9 factor to remove any greens. Um, to process the, I process the luminance using the normal flow, where I basically removed the gradients using DB. I think I ran the DB, I think, two or, two or three times with a, um, a factor of, I think, 0.5, high tolerance factor of five. Um, I did a blur X to bring out details. I did a, no, a noise exterminator to clear up some noise. And then I stretched the email just using um, STF and um, a histogram transformation. I adjusted the channels uh, in STF, then moved that, uh, moved that uh, values to ST, and then stretched it. Once I had the stressed image, um, to make it sharpen it up, I applied the SDR multi-scale transform function to it, so just to sharpen it up, and I got something like that. Um, to get my LRGB image, I applied the previous luminance to my RGB, um, to stretch the image and to preserve the colors, I had to go for the mass stretch, uh, which I did with the default settings. Uh, the process works by applying the small stretches iterate, iteratively with the help of mass. This gave me, this was not the final stretching, but gave me the starting point. Once I have the um, stretch image with, from mass stretch, I adjusted the channels using the STF and then applied it using the histogram transformation to have my final stretch. After, after the final stretch, I again ran the DBE with a high fall factor. Um, I'm very much into DBEs, like I run it a lot. 
Um, the stress image was lacking any colors. So to bring out the colors, I did a curve transformation. And I think I removed a little bit of noise. I think uh, using noise exterminator, I think 0.5. Once I had this image, um, this was this image. And then I did the star net to take the stars out and to process the image in Photoshop. In Photoshop, um, I could see some um, some artifacts that I could remove using clone stamp, as well as some bring up some more colors using color saturation and color masks. Once I did that, I had my uh, processed image from Pixelmat uh, from Photoshop, and I combined with my starless in, um, with my stars using Pixelmat. Um, after that, I had to be, um, I have to um, um, basically had to sharpen it up, so I use I use the range mask. And uh, only for the uh, uh, galaxy, um, sorry, uh, only for the galaxy, and apply the local histogram equalization to it. I think it was 0.18 factor. Then I used the same mask, inverse it, and applied on the same image and did a blur X to sharpen the stars, which basically makes the sharp um, stars pinpointy. Then I cropped the image and presented the image. Uh, any questions here before I go to fix inside? None yet. Yeah. Um, here, this was the original Etche had data, and this is the revised. Um, sorry, uh, hold on. This is the revised one that I used that um, subtraction to take it out. This is using 0 0.12 factor, and the RGB image was this, it's lacking any colors. I could see some gradients over here and here also. Um, this was my luminance. Uh, I could see gradients on this side also here. And my LRGB was this. And this one, I further um, bumped up the colors uh, in Photoshop. This was my star mask. And this was my range mask, which basically capture only the galaxy, nothing else. And this was my image here. I have saved it so I can show you a difference. This is before Blurex. If you know the stars, this is after Blurex. Just the stars, the mask is on the galaxy. That's all I have. Any questions? Um, I haven't seen any come in on YouTube yet, um, but we'll see if we get in any more with the delay and come back. But uh, does anybody in the audience have questions in the room? All right. Okay, Rory, I think Mike's back in, um, in the room, right? I'm back, yes. You this, wanna, you got I'm, a group? <laughs> I'll give it a go, see if, see if we can have better success this time around. Looks good, Mike. That's looking a lot better, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Thank that was very strange. <laughs> Thank goodness. I don't know what it's, happened first time. Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. Um, uh, most particularly, thank thank you, Terry, for uh, sharing this this wonderful data with us. It's great. Uh, certainly, as a as a, a northern observer, it's it's really nice to work on some southern data. So, thank you for that. Um, so, let me just run straight in. Uh, I've not got any slides, I'm afraid. I'm just going straight into Pix Insight. Um, and let me just start with my uh, the luminance channel. This this is um, Terry's. Uh, original luminance data. Um, I did a bit of cropping, a little bit of uh, um, DBE on this, but the thing I just wanted really to, to share with, with people was uh, the um, what I presume must be AMGLO down here, um, which I wanted to try and uh, work on a little bit. So let me just show you what I, I did with that. Um, so find my luminance there we go so my, my my first thought was was to try to clone stamp 
this out. But of course, there are a whole load of, of stars in the vicinity, which would make it really quite difficult and awkward to, to work around those. Um, so then I had the brilliant idea of just um, getting rid of those stars <laughs> and um, then clone stamping the um, clone stamping out and then putting stars straight back in again. And that seemed to work really nicely. Um, so after dynamic background extraction, cropping, uh, doing that little bit of a trick there. And then I, I did a bit of deconvolution using Russ Croman's excellent Blur Exterminator just to really sort of bring out a little bit of detail there. And that um, got me to the stage where uh, I needed to combine in the hydrogen alpha. Um, and uh, as we, we've just heard, the, the need to, to really um, subtract out of the um, hydrogen alpha data. Unfortunately, there's, there's no such thing as a perfect uh, hydrogen alpha filter. Um, so to get the emission line, just the emission line, we need to subtract out the continuum, uh, which essentially means subtracting out a, a proportion of, of the red as the continuum. Um, now, the, uh, the traditional way of doing this is, is by um, a bit of trial and error, trying to find the, the, the right factor to, to multiply your red by to, to subtract out. Um, but just recently, um, Charles Hagen on his uh, website, um, nightphotons.com, uh, has published quite a, a neat little trick uh, that he suggests for, for doing this, which is what I use for the image. And what he suggests is that you set up a, um, a synthetic color image. Uh, I've called it the hydrogen alpha support here. Um, and this image is constructed. Um, out of the um, your narrow band data in the red channel and then your continuum data in the blue and the green channel and the trick here is that if you then do a, a color calibration on that um, that effectively what the color calibration will do is to equalize the intensities across um, of the stars across these these three channels um, which effectively then gives you uh, the ability to subtract out the green channel from the red channel and leave just the hydrogen alpha emission line. Um, so a little bit of background neutral neutralization, then do that color calibration and you're ready to go. I actually did a little bit more. Um, I also um, got rid of the, the stars because I knew that um, it was never going to be absolutely perfect. So I didn't want those just being left in as a... Um, it just gave me a cleaner result. Um, so then subtracting out, uh, and I have the hydrogen alpha emission line, which I can then add straight back into uh, both the red channel and also the luminance channel to give me red hydrogen alpha and luminance with hydrogen alpha. Um, so coming back into the luminance channel there. Um, So that's the, the, the pixel math expression there to, to um, add the, the emission line back in again. Um, I, I chose a 50% um, boost rather than the, the, the doubling, um, but uh, to, just to give it a little bit more presence in, in the final data. Uh, and then we're in, a, in the position to start uh, moving from the linear into the, uh, the nonlinear. And for that, I use generalized hyperbolic stretch as my stretching tool. Um, if I just open up there, the, the first stretch that I did, I wanted to set a, a symmetry point um, really at the point where the star glow around the galaxy gives way to, to the sort of the background, um, which is about um, 0 0.001. Um, so, that gave me my, my first stretch uh, point, well, point triple zero nine six six to be precise, um, high local uh, intensity, and then bring in the stretch factor um, to go to uh, that nonlinear uh, first step. Now, GHS will always give you quite a flat um, image or quite a flat subject matter um, after that first stretch, so you'll need to do a number of um, subsequent stretches, second and subsequent stretches, to try and bring the contrast into the, the main subject matter. Um, so 
if I just bring up the uh, there, so if I just run along here, um, the the sort of the K values here are sort of in this 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 area, uh, which means I'm looking at trying to stretch um, over here in the histogram, um, which I can't really see uh, because uh, it, because at the moment. So the, the the trick that I used was was just to use the log view of the histogram. And then that gives you a much better view of, of um, what you're looking at in those areas of the histogram. Um, and what I did at this stage was really, it's quite lumpy coming down from the, the, the peak, the background peak, down to the higher pixel values. And what you really want to do is to try to, to even out those lumps. And the way I did that was to select uh, in the middle of a lump, send that value to my symmetry point, um, add a little bit of local intensity and then as you start to bring that stretch factor in you'll see that actually that does a really nice job of just um, um, smoothing out those lumps um, if the background gets a little bit uh, dark that can be protected by you bringing the the shadow protection slider in there if you start to blow things out that could be protected by just bringing the protect highlights um, slider in as well but really what I did was was to work my way down with a number of GHS stretches just really trying to, to even out all of that uh, and after a number of those stretches I had a histogram that looked like that much much smoother going from uh, background to, to the higher intensity and that brings in uh, the uh, the contrast that I wanted actually in the in the subject matter I also did a little bit of uh, local histogram equalization um, punch out mask and um, knock back the center of the, the galactic core a little bit with HDR multi scale transform uh, to give my luminance image like that then um, I combined the red with H alpha the green and the blue to give um, my RGB image, which needed uh, obviously a little bit of uh, color calibration. Um, so SPCC in um, PixInsight brings that to a better color. And then uh, deconvolution um, using Blur Exterminator, a little bit of stretching um, to get myself to that image. Then uh, I was then ready to bring in the luminance channel into that. Uh, a little bit more uh, GHS, um, just tweaking really at this stage. So, for example, this one was GHS and used in saturation mode. So that just brings up the colors a little bit, not back to a little bit of green. Um, final uh, dose of noise exterminator. And that was my final image. So that was that was really what I had. That's a cool workflow. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a very cool image, Mike. Um, loved how you uh, showed us how to bring in that um, that HA uh, data back in there. That was cool. And then uh, that was a hard image to work on because we had that, like you're saying, that amp glow and that bottom. So a little little tricky there yes indeed yeah no it was uh it was fun to work on <laughs> and then uh conwar i wanted to also say it was um it was you your image was uh really good too thanks for showing us the blur x um that was a cool cool feature um showing us kind of the difference with that on and off and then yeah. i just want to say best of luck to the new astronomy club the uh memphis astronomical society yeah, thank you. All right, next up, we're going to have Jari present. OK, I'll share my screen. Can you see this now? Yeah, that's looks good. good yeah. Good. good. Yes, hello, all. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to explain my workflow. 
on this nice galaxy and thank you terry for the data i'm a retired professor in fluid dynamics from Lappeenranta university of technology finland and uh, i'm giving this presentation it's a bit early in the morning five o'clock here in here in finland and after my retirement i started uh, my uh, hobby in astronomy and uh, i am a member of slu i have done remotely 3000 plus missions from observatories in the canary islands and chile and uh, some of the images can be seen behind me in my virtual hall of uh, astronomy i'm also a member of aavso my special interest there has been ss signi and i have 7500 observations on uh, about my workflow so i decided to use only hydrogen alpha and uh, mainly peaks in sight and using the auto integrate script and then the final touch was done in photoshop and if we go to the peaks in sight i would like to talk a little about the auto integrate script it is developed by my slu colleague Jarmo Ruth, and I think the link to to his website is in the chat. This is freely available and uh, makes the repetitive process much simpler. Just by using the default values, in most times you get really good results but in case you want you can tune it quite a lot uh, as you see there there are uh, things that you can tick as parameters for the cropping or color calibration background uh, neutralization and you can choose several star um, eliminating processes if you want for the process processing for example you can choose different stretching methods uh, of course being a, a a script you are a bit limited than that uh, how many stretching you are you are going to use uh, it will do a lot of intermediate files, like you can see here in the uh, top left corner, uh, both from the linear stage and, and, and also after stretching. And if you are not satisfied with the final results, you can also uh, make some extra processing and uh, start from different uh, stages of the processing for example here you you have this uh, auto continue button so there are 15 different stages from where you can start the uh, to redo the processing okay so For, for Terry's data, so I used the green and blue channels as they were. And uh, as we also can do narrow band imaging, so I combined the red channel so that I used 75% of the hydrogen alpha and 25% of the red image. And the luminance was made by taking the maximum values between the luminance and hydrogen alpha files and basically 
the processing was done with these values so you can see the files that are grouped by filter there on top and then there are cropping background neutralization and how color are calibrated uh, and here on the bottom then there is the hydrogen alpha how it's mixed with the uh, channels uh, so this is the view of the script for for the data and if we go look to the results so the image after the script is here it looks promising but it is missing the colors so uh, i decided to go back and to look on the images after integration and if you use the auto stretch you can see that the auto stretch is quite heavy for the for this data so you need to be much more subtle so i decided to do the hyperbolic stretching separately for for the luminance and the uh, rgb the luminance was made with a si uh, single run but uh, the rgb was done twice the first one was using the uh, color parameter option to get the colors better out and then the second final stretch was made with the rgb option and uh, then the two these two images were then combined and uh, i got the final pix insight image and uh, save this as a 16-bit tip file and went to photoshop uh, here only small tuning in the camera raw filter and uh, then i decided to crop the uh, anomaly in the bottom left corner and and uh, to further hide this corner so i put my signature there and and so we get to the final image which looks like like this so thank you for your attention and if there are any questions so i'm happy to answer them okay awesome yeah thanks uh yeah youtube's pretty quiet tonight <laughs> um but uh yeah that's gorgeous thank, thank you jari i must say i love the uh, signature touch on the the corner there that was um <laughs> That was a nice finishing touch there. Beautiful image overall. And thank you so much for um, presenting at five o'clock in the morning from Finland. Really appreciate that. You're welcome. All right, next up we have Steve. Uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name's Steve, as Rory just said. And thanks very much uh, for allowing me, allowing me to uh, present my data. And, uh, and thanks, uh, to Terry for providing it in the first place. So uh, I really enjoyed processing it. And I must admit, uh, this is the first time I've actually processed anybody else's data. So uh, it was a great uh, personal opportunity for me to uh, to get a hold of uh, some really good data and muck around with it and see what I could get. Um, I didn't really spend a huge amount of time uh, processing it, but uh, I'll show you what I've got. So if I just uh, share my screen. <clears throat> Uh, window. So hopefully, so you've got that now. 
Uh, yeah, and if you want to go into the presentation yep. mode. Okay, there we go. So hopefully that looks like. Right. Um, I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail like everybody else. I haven't got uh, pictures uh, of my uh, pick site uh, processes or anything like that. But I'll just go through uh, what I did uh, in a very simplistic sort of way. So obviously I use uh, Pics Insight. And the, uh, the very first thing I did was uh, use the Terry's LRGB and HA raw data and applied uh, the DBE process on each just to sort of uh, uh, get rid of any gradients that were in each of the screens. <clears throat> and then uh, with the, uh, the uh, red and the blue channel, I applied uh, linear fit um, using the green channel just to sort of uh, make each uh, of the RGB images uh, of, of a similar uh, brightness. Um, and then use channel combination to bring the, uh, L, uh, the RGB channels together and uh, give me one color image. Uh, from there, uh, I used uh, photo, photometric uh, color calibration, uh, just to sort of uh, uh, well, color calibrated, obviously. Uh, and I, I was doing this before a lot of the uh, changes were done to P, uh, to Pix Insight. Um, Steve, yeah. Steve, Steve, could I interrupt you here? Sure. What should what should we be seeing right now? Uh, I'm just uh, showing you my uh, workflow uh, on the. Uh, the uh, uh, okay, what we are seeing is a PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, uh, well, just the, the big page. We aren't seeing it as a presentation, and it you apparently have two slides there. No, no, I've just got the, the one presentation. I, I really no, no. That. Um, so if you, you, have, you have two monitors, is that right? Yeah, we're looking at your yeah. other monitor right now, the one with with PowerPoint still up, but not the whole screen. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's it because uh, when you do the presentation mode, it will always select your second monitor. Uh, so that's the one you'll need to share. Um, alternatively, we can just look at it in the PowerPoint mode and you just click on the other slide. <laughs> well, if I, if I stop sharing it and then I'll try it again, how's that sound? Sure. Right. Uh, and then just select your other screen. Yeah, come um, on. Cool. When you do the sharing. Hang on. Is it the same? Um, well, so we're still seeing the PowerPoint, but you've you've clicked on the second slide, and we can see it, so we can just roll with that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, all right, as I was saying, I, I used DBE uh, with uh, followed by linear fit. Uh, did the channel combination to bring it, uh, to produce a color image. Uh, did the photometric color calibration, and then I was explaining that. Uh, you know, Pix Insight has introduced quite a few new processes, and I've also added in uh, a couple of uh, the, the new scripts as well, uh, such as Star Exterminator. But I haven't used any of those processes. I've, I've just basically used a very uh, basic processing flow. Um, so uh, once I did the uh, photometric color calibration on the color image, I uh, uh, just extracted a little bit of the green using the uh, the SCNR process. And what I like to do after that is use uh, the repaired HSV separation script. Um, and uh, what that seems to do is uh, just uh, provides a little bit of color detail to the stars. Um, and uh, it just gives it a nice uh, uh, colorful starry background. Um, and what that what happens is it produces separate uh, color channels once again. So you have to recombine them back into an RGB image, which is what I uh, and I just use the color combination script to do that. Um, then uh, with the HA data, I uh, simply enhanced the, uh, the red channel with the HA, and I use uh, the um, the processes as described in uh, Light Vortex Astronomy which uh, they've got a website that uh, you can get access to where all of the uh, detailed instructions on how to do that. Um, so I just uh, just followed the processes there very simplistically. Uh, and once that was done, I was ready for um, stretching. So 
Uh, I like using the arc sign process in PixInsight, uh, and that just sort of gives you a partially stretched image. And once that's done, then uh, I just use the histogram transformation. Um, I've, uh, I'm just still learning the uh, generalized hyperbolic uh, stretching mechanisms there. Um, but uh, you know, I just use the histogram transformation um, uh, back in uh, when I was uh, processing this particular data. And uh, with the, uh, the luminous data, I just used LRGB combination to, uh, to add the luminous data back into the, uh, into the, uh, com into the RGB image. And following that, I, f I noticed that the core of the galaxy was a little bit blown out. So I just used the HDR multi-scale transform process just to sort of bring the, uh, the core down a little bit, bring in some detail, uh, followed by uh, curves adjustment, just to uh, you know, bring down the, uh, the background and, and bring up some of the color in the galaxy itself. Um, and then following that, I used uh, the, uh, the uh, EZ uh, processing suite to, uh, it, there's a star reduction um, uh, script in there, which I used just to sort of uh, bring the, the star down, uh, the star, stars down a little bit. Uh, and finally, uh, just use the ADV sharpen script to uh, just to sort of sharpen up the image. And, uh, and basically that was it. Uh, so uh, sorry if I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail, but uh, that was basically uh, my workflow. And uh, uh, I've since uh, changed the, uh, the workflow a little bit with all the uh, introduction of these uh, new processes and what have you and, and changes in, uh, in Pix Insight. It's always been a big learning curve for me, but uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, uh, to be able to present the data as it, as it appears. So uh, I'll stop sharing and I'll uh, take you back to Rory. All right. Thanks, Steve, for, for presenting with us tonight. That was cool to see your, your um, workflow just laid out like that. And, and um, you, you know, two things I haven't used in my workflow is the arc sign and the uh, uh, histogram, uh, the arc sign and then the histogram. And I'm not familiar with ADV sharpen. So I uh, learned a couple of things from, from uh, your workflow. So yeah, really appreciate you sharing with us tonight. Uh, next, uh, the last presenter is going to be Rod. And then after you, Rod, I'm going to uh, go through a, a quick, um, I made a power slide of everyone's um, pictures that submitted. So I had about eight or nine. And I'll just really quick quickly go through those after your presentation, Rod, and then uh, we'll close the program after that. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Rod Pommier, and I'm in Portland, Oregon. And I also like to pay homage to Terry for his data. The sculptor group has always been one of my favorite groups of galaxies and NGC 55 within that group is, is, is my absolute favorite because it's so bright and edge on, but it barely creeps six degrees above my horizon here in Portland. So to get a great view of it from down under um, was great. So this is my image and um, the Hawkeye among you will see that my workflow is pretty much just like what I did uh, on the show using uh, Eric Cole's data for M33. I did it mostly in uh, Photoshop with a couple tools in PixInsight. And I was happy to see and quite flattered that that got turned into a TAIC shorts of video that a lot of people have watched. So just like that, I plan on building this image for you in real time uh, using Terry's data in about eight minutes. So starting out in Photoshop, I started out with uh, the luminance frame and I just stretched that using my standard curve, which if I pull it up, looks like this. And I actually just did two iterations back to back of that. And a third iteration, I think, would blow things out. So as my final stretch, I just did a little more gentle stretching to bring out some of the halo stars in it and pull down on the upper part of the curve so I didn't get any, any blown out details. And then darkened up the sky background by bringing the black slider into the toe of the histogram. 
And then the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to bring out the dust lanes. So I used the high pass filter to do that. So I made a duplicate layer on top. And then I went to filter, other, high pass. And what I found was that about 35 pixels brought out the dust lanes very, very nicely. Uh, but when you throw this on here, the stars get pretty funky. So before I painted in detail, I decided I wanted to make this a starless image. So I went to select color range and took the highlights and that circles the stars. And then I wanted to modify that by expanding it about six to eight pixels to really include all the star halos. And then I did edit, cut to get my starless image. Then I threw a hide all mask on that. And I changed the blending mode to overlay. Went over here and got my brush, made sure I was selected with white. And then I just painted in these dust clouds. to help highlight them all through the galaxy, wherever they appear. And I found this also helped bring out some of the star clusters, some of the individual blue supergiant stars. So I painted over those a bit here and there where they showed up to help make them pop and give the galaxy a little sparkle here and there. And then, I wanted to blur that mask to get rid of the edges. So I went to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just made sure the edges of that were blurred out a bit for a smooth transition, and then flatten the image. And so that was my luminance frame. And then I went on to the RGB, and again, I just stretched that using my standard curve. So pull up the standard curve here. And then I did another iteration. And then once again, a third iteration, that would be a bit too much. So I just did a gentler curve and brought this down so we didn't have any blowout. And then brought in the black slider back to the toe of the histogram. And then to start making an LRGB, I just went over and selected my luminance frame, select all, edit, copy, and then pasted it on top of my RGB. And I'm actually going to make a duplicate of this. So we'll call this RGB. And call that luminance. And then blended it with the luminosity blending mode. Then I did two things to enhance the color. The first thing I did was I did a shadow highlights adjustment. So I went to adjustments, shadow highlights. And if you just leave the highlights at nothing, but you take the shadows and crank it up to about 80% and the adjustment up to about 80%, that will really enhance the color without adding any noise. But then another trick is that if you pull up levels, anything you can do to increase the contrast in that shadow adjustments layer uh, will increase the color saturation. So if you slide, this back up to the toe, you'll get a much deeper color. And for my second color adjustment, I decided I was going to do uh, some lab contrast curves to boost the color. So we have to change the mode of this RGB image to lab color mode. We're not going to flatten. And then pull up curves again. And we go to the A channel which controls greens and reds. And we want to put an inflection point right in the middle with a zero input and a zero output. And the way we increase contrast is grab the curve here and pull up on the curve and grab over here and pull down by the same amount. 
something about like that. And that will enhance the reds and the greens. And then go to the B channel, which controls blues and yellows. Once again, put an inflection point at zero input and zero output and make the same type of curve to boost the color. And this is now boosting the blues and yellows. But that gives me a lot of star color, but also noise in the background. So we're gonna put a mask in here to just have the color where we want it and neutralize the sky background. So I put in a mask, went into the mask, and we're actually gonna use a copy of the galaxy's image. Um, and we have one that we copied, so we'll just go paste and pull up levels to make a mask. So using the white slider, white reveals, and black conceals. So we want the galaxy and the brighter stars to show up. I uh, got the wrong one. There, that's a good mask. And now we have the color just in the galaxy itself and the stars. Um, so the only other thing I needed after that were my HA data. So I went into Pix Insight and got the HA frame. And I actually made a starless version of this and then saved it as a TIFF and took it back into Photoshop. And here it is, but this is a grayscale image and we're gonna colorize it red. So we need to change the mode for that into RGB color. And if you now go image, adjust hue and saturation, and then click the colorize button. Red will be zero or 360, doesn't really matter. Take it up to 100%. And I left the lightness right where it was. So we now have an intense red version of the HA data. And then we can copy that. Uh, select all. Edit, copy. And we're gonna paste that on top of our LRGB stack and there it is on top. And I'm gonna combine this with the LRGB stack using lighten mode. With lighten mode, uh, Photoshop will compare the pixel values of the top layer to the layer beneath and will always select the brighter of the two values. So what we'll have, beginning we have this black sky, basically black clipped. The brighter hydrogen alpha data will show up but everywhere else, the LRGB image will show up. So if we change this to light mode, now we have our HA data in here. And then the last things I did is I basically tweaked it up a bit. I went down here and got rid of the app flow um, and I used the burn tool to sort of darken some of the brighter HA regions. And that is the finished image. So with that, I will stop sharing. Thank you so much, Rod. Uh, um, cool to uh, see the shadow adjustment for color. I um, I haven't used that in my workflow. I really like the way you used uh, PixInsight and Photoshop. Um, how you interchange uh, those two those two programs, especially using masks in Photoshop. Um, and the the uh, star colors in your image are awesome. Um, if you haven't seen Rod's presentation on using astrophotography to calculate the distance to M31, that was a presentation he did on the Astro Imaging channel. That was such an awesome presentation. So good to have you back on here. And uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm going to share um, a quick uh, presentation on um, uh, PowerPoint real quick of everyone's images, and then we'll, we'll close up the program. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, you're good. After you uh, minimize your browser there. Yeah, yeah, right there. We're good now? Yeah. Okay, so the, uh, let me see here. All right, so submissions, we had about eight or nine in total. The first one was uh, Flavio Cicero. 
and uh, I think we know who this is from the signature on the bottom, perhaps. Yeah, that's our Jerry Backman's uh, image. Olaf Toper. This was Philip. Really good image there. Rick Verrigan. Rod Palmier. Rune. Steve De Lizel. And Xanthius at the end. So thank you everyone for your submissions. Really appreciate your, your time and, and, uh, and uh, helping us um, do this program tonight. And uh, let me find my way back to my my screen so I can stop sharing. And that is all I have for tonight. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Alex. Hey, thanks, Rory. I want to re uh, remind everybody that Rory just likes doing stuff well. And uh, he picked this up and ran with it. Uh, he showed you that screen earlier where you can go on the workshop from the website. And we've done this about, what, six times now? So there are like six data sets out there and six results and six programs that you can watch just like this where you can pick up other ideas of how to do it. Okay, with that in mind, Sid's going to be here next week. Sid Fried, he's going to tell us about um, uh, his journey in astrophotography. And I think we've got all the questions that were over on, on YouTube. We've got them done up already. Um, You've got a couple of links over in the comments over there where you could find um, uh, some links to some of the special programs that uh, uh, where our presenters tonight have referenced. Uh, so I want to thank Molly for taking care of the, the uh, production tonight. She, it was her turn to manage the production and we did real well. And I think that's it for everybody. Terry. Special shout out to you for providing that data in the first place. So I'd like to I'd like to thank everyone for having uh, a go at it and sharing the work. It's always amazing just to see how <laughs> different the results are from the same data set. If I, if I were to process it now, it would be completely different yet again. <laughs> One difference I did note was um, uh, I did a lot of my work in uh, Photoshop. Is uh, the final part I actually created a mask around the galaxy and I purposely add noise to my data. See a lot of people getting rid of noise, but I tend to I add noise. Like it makes galaxies look a little crunchy, for lack of a better word, or grainy. They give a, a a bit of a sparkle in there. But again, that's just a trick of the eye. So it's maybe something to explore sometimes. Just adding a bit of noise can add to can add to the final result. Over to you, Alex. Okay, and I'm just here to say thanks, Molly, for taking care of us tonight. And I think that's it. Uh, good night, everybody. All righty. Good night, everybody.